So hi there, um, I'm Andrew from Scotland's Night Sky and I'm going to explain and show you all my equipment that I use for my astrophotography whilst travelling the country. Um, since I always get asked loads of questions about my gear and the price of it and how to use it, what's best for what. So I just thought to do a big overall video and I'll put it up on my website. Excuse the background, I'm just doing it in my, my house so I've not exactly got a studio as sort, so I'm just doing it in my home. So it's not exactly the most fitting places for it, but I'm going to give it a go and explain all my gear to you. So I'll start off with the bodies, the camera bodies, which I pretty much have Canon. So I've got a Canon 2000D, a Canon 13000D, and then the Sony A7S. So for the Canons, I used to use them before, well, these were my first cameras. Yeah, the Canon DSLRs, they're pretty cheap, they're about three to four hundred pound each. Um, they've not got the best ISO capabilities, so they're not the best, they're not exactly astro cameras, but they're just a generic DSLR. Um, and I've used these to capture so many memories of starting out in my photography journey. So things like the lunar eclipse, I've taken these to Iceland for the Northern Lights and stuff, so they've been through me through thick and thin and they're my go-to cameras pretty much for time lapses and stuff. I use these for time lapses just because they've not got the best image quality for prints and stuff because the ISO capabilities aren't the best. So I use them just for time lapses. So I'll set these up when I'm going around my Sony's, I'll set these up in the distance and let them just run so I can do a time lapse of them. Yeah, so it's the Canon 1300D and a 2000D, both pretty damn good for the price. I highly recommend them for starting out in astro photography as they can do deep sky photography, northern lights photography, any sort of photography, but just not professional quality. So if you're wanting to kind of start out in astro photography and get the basics of how to take pictures, these Canon DSLRs are absolutely fantastic. Uh, they can do pretty much everything. And the lenses I use with them, the generic one that came with the 13D, which was my first ever camera, was 18 to 55 millimeter. Uh, what is? The, I don't know what the F numbers is. Um, it is fantastic lens. I still use this lens to date for, say, videos or if I'm doing time lapses. This is the, my first lens to go for. 3.5 to 5.6, sorry, and it's a zoom lens, 18 to 55 millimeters. It is pretty fantastic. I use this for, this is my first one I go to for the time lapses, just so, because the the quality on this is actually really good. The 18 millimeters is actually pretty wide, and I can zoom all the way into 55 millimeters. So these this this setup here is brilliant for nocturnal and clouds, so you don't have to go too too dark, um, when there's still a wee bit of light. So it can it handles nocturnal and clouds fantastically. And these and you might have seen my northern lights pictures from Iceland. These, this was the camera that take, took them, so I can't say enough about the 1300D and the 18 to 55mm. Fantastic starter lens. So that's always going to be my favourite lens for Canon cameras. Um, I've got a very wide open one, so if I'm doing a big Milky Way or non lights or something, or the not so clouds, I've got the Sigma, what is it? I've not used it in ages. 10, 10 to 20 millimetres. 10, 10 millimetres is hella wide. You can get a lot in the 10 millimetres. goes to 20 millimetres as well, it's just fantastic. Highly recommend that for huge big mil Milky Way images. Um, but yeah, I use them with the Canon cameras just because they're Canon mounted. It's a Sigma lens, but it fits on Canon cameras. Fantastic lens. It was about 100 quid. Yeah, I got that off MPB, which is a fantastic website if you want to get any sort of camera accessories, camera bodies, lenses and that. So I got that off, to be honest, I think most of this stuff is off MPB, just because it's such good quality and it's cheaper. So yeah, the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeters is fantastic for, for the cheaper cams as well. It's just so wide, it gets a lot of sky in, which is fantastic. Uh, for the zoom lens, what I use for the cam then, is the 780-300mm. It, it was fantastic. It's quite, yeah, it's quite nice and portable. It can fit in a bag. I'll show you a bag soon. It can fit in the bag really nicely. It's got autofocus, manual focus, like the other cameras as well. 
It was brilliant for Noctilus and Clouds as well. And moon, the moon shots, moon rises, moon sets, and sun rises, sun sets. Fantastic. I've captured a lot of really good pictures of this. The lunar eclipse that happened, oh God, about three years ago now, was mainly caught on this, and it was fantastic. But recently, I don't know what's happened with the lens, but it's the sharpness has just dropped a bit. I can't get a really sharp picture with it, which is quite annoying. So I haven't used it in a while because the some this just the sharpness has just fell off it a wee bit. But I have got another cam, I have another lens that I will show you that is just absolutely trumped this. But this for this was only it was eighty quid, eighty quid off of MPB again. Fantastic lens. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. I've captured the. Andromeda Galaxy with it, uh, Orion Nebula, and yeah, the lunar eclipses and stuff, and loads of moon rises, moon sets. Fantastic, brilliant lens. So if you're starting out, Canon 75 to 300 millimeter, you cannot go wrong. But after three years, the quality's just not there for me anymore, just because I've moved on a wee bit. But fantastic lens. Another thing with the Canon cameras, the ISO only goes. What's their settings? So the ISO variant for the Canon cameras. There's only 100 ISO to 6400 ISO. It does have a high setting which is 12,800 but that's just hella noisy and it's just rubbish. So it only goes to 6400 ISO which is pretty good but obviously for night photography um, I need a wee bit better night photography, night capability from the cameras. So fantastic cameras but they're just not astro modified sort of, they're just the, the bog standard DSLRs. So if we go to the Sony cameras, this is where we get professional. The Sony A7S. Now the Sony Alpha range has got so, so many cameras. You get the Sony oh, AS2, AS3, ASR, AS1 now, but they're hella expensive. So I just, I've just got the bog standard A7S. I learned this camera from watching Alan Wallace, that you probably all know. Um, the capabilities of this in the night is fantastic. So you can see the stars live on camera, on videos, you can see it in your live view. The ISO capability goes up to 320,000, which is just mind-blowing. It's pretty much a see-in-the-dark see in camera. It's a full-frame camera, so it's it has got like the best sensor. It is just, it's a mirrorless camera as well, obviously. And um, from this camera, I've converted to mirrorless. Mirrorless is just so much better um, for for astrophotography. I think just the way it handles noise and it handles the dark shadows and stuff. So A7S is just an absolute godsend. Its, pr it's price is a bit pricey, obviously. A mirrorless camera, mirrorless cameras are always a wee bit pricier. So what did I pick up the A7S for? I got it for, I've got two now. I got one about a year ago and that was 850. Um, and then I just got one a few months ago again for 750. So it's slowly going down, but they are expensive because they're just so good. And they're just the top of the range, mirrorless astrophotography cameras. You can get them modified to get, uh, is it hydrogen? and stuff out of the sky and you can get Bernard's loop and you can get all the different nebulae in the sky but I've not got mine astro modified yet because I don't really need it just now and um, I'm kind of happy with just as it is um, but what makes this camera really tick is obviously what lens you put on it so my favourite lenses for astrophotography just now is the Sam these Samyang lenses fantastic, absolutely brilliant the first one that I got was this Samyang 2.8 14mm absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant it was about £400 so it's a bit pricey uh, it's a Sony E mount so it can fit on the Sony camera so the A7S just holds E mount lenses um, you can vary its F number but I always keep it at 2.8 because I don't need to I don't shoot in the day pretty much I just avoid shooting in the day I'm a night photographer that's it so it is fantastic, it's a nice bulbous lens, yeah, the 14mm is just huge, with the full frame as well, I don't know what it is with the full because it's a full frame camera, but it's even wider than 14mm, if that makes sense, I'm not a scientist when it comes to photography gear and why things work, but I just know it 
on a, a 40 millimeter on a full frame it's like hella wide so that's fantastic i can't wait to go to ice i'm going to iceland in, in a few months and to try these cameras and these lenses under the proper northern lights will be unreal since i've never done that before i've just done it in scotland and um, so these will be fantastic and get getting huge panoramas it, it captures so much of the night sky and I can go to quite a high ISO because of the camera and the, the low F number because the low F number holds in a lot of a lot of light it just kind of sucks in the light the low F number um, my favourite lens though however well one little drawback to the 40mm is it does distort quite a lot around the edges so you do have to kind of lens correction post production so that is one downfall that I kind of don't like. It does distort quite a lot around the edges. Um, I'm presuming more model, more higher end models, more expensive models won't do it as much. This is kind of a cheaper model, but it does distort around. But with a wee, wee bit of lens correction and a bit of cropping, it's absolutely fine. But the favourite lens, without a doubt, without a doubt, and what all my camera, all my video footage is captured on is. <laughs> the Samyang 24mm 1.4. So 1.4 that holds in a hell of a lot of light. So the f so what f number it is pretty much it just allows more light into your camera. It opens up your sensor pretty much. It opens up. It opens up inside this lens to suck in more light to hit your sensor. So the lower the f number the better. So this goes to 1.4, which is pretty damn low. There's not many lenses go lower than that. I think f1.2 is the lowest I've ever seen. Um, so 1.4 is fantastic, and this is what all my footage is captured on. So when people say, how can you capture the stars on camera? How can you see the northern lights on camera? This lens, <laughs> because it's 1.4, it just sucks in so much light. 24mm is a bang on, perfect for the right amount of space you need for a picture. It's not too wide, not too cropped in, not too zoomed in. It's absolutely fantastic. Cannot recommend this cam this lens enough. It was pretty expensive, it was about 400, 350, 400, but without a doubt, the best investment I've ever made, best cam, best lens without a doubt. So it is fantastic. So I've had that, this for about a year and 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, the other one that I've just got just recently is this one, which is, it's a Sony camera, so it's not Samyang. I think I've got two two Sony lenses. One is getting videoed on this. It's just a it's just a kit lens for this A7S 28 to 70 millimeter. It's not an astrophotography lens. It's just a kit one, kit for the camera. So I use that for video and daytime photography. But this one, 1 1.8 50 millimeters, blooming fantastic, fantastic. I've I've only recently I've not used it in pitch black because I only got about a month ago and we're in summer just now. So I've only really used it for nocturnal and clouds, and the clean cleanliness of the image is brilliant. It's the right zoomed in, so you can get quite close to the horizon. So I'm guessing it will be really good for the northern lights. But yeah, yeah, 1.850 millimeters, very very good. It's brilliant for panoramas as well because you can going to go close to the horizon and do a nice panorama over the horizon. So hopefully an aurora, aurora, an aurora arc will be really good. And I've obviously got Noctos and Cloud panoramas that you might have seen already on a previous video um, so this is fantastic I got this off MPB as well shock and it was it was cheap it was only about 150 which is fantastic so 150 quid for that e-mount Sony e-mount highly recommend that as well what else have I got I have so that's the cameras and lenses done uh, oh no it's not I've got a lens down here it's is one of my favourite lenses. You might have a guess what it is. It's for moon rises, moon sets, all that shebang. It is the Sigma 150 It is absolutely fantastic for, as I said, moon rises, moon shots. I use it on the Canon. It's a Canon mounted lens, so I have to use. Uh, it was a bit. This adapter was a bit twenty quid off Amazon. So this is a Canon. This is a Canon mount that mounts to Sony. If that makes any sense. So this is a Canon lens. Put the Canon side onto that, and then put the Sony lens, Sony end onto the Sony. I know, um, mental. But that was only about twenty quid off of Amazon, just for a bit of metal. Typical. 
But yeah, it's a fantastic lens. I, I've used it throughout the day for wildlife, sports and stuff, for my work and stuff. Um, it comes with all the autofocus, stabilisation, everything. I only use it obviously for the moon, moon rises, moon sets. I've used it for some noctilucent clouds shows as well, which has been nice. But I use that just for the moon, moon shots. Fantastic. A lot of good memories with this. It was pretty pricey. I got that off Amazon a year ago and it was about 800, 850, 850 but it is well worth the price. The, the quality of this is just fantastic and with this mounted with a Sony A7S brings you unreal footage because the Sony can bump up the ISO so you can see like the moon in the dark which is just fantastic. You can see like things that this lens isn't supposed to see but with this camera it makes it possible. So this lens mounted to the Sony is an absolute game changer. So I really, really highly re recommend the Sony 150 to 600. Can't get better than that. But if I want to go even closer into the moon, say an ISS transit, which I've, I've never actually captured yet, or a lunar eclipse, or just want a really close in picture of the moon, I then head to my telescope, which is quite an old telescope, but does the job. It's the Celestron Astrophy 102mm. Um, it's fantastic. I've had this, this is my first ever sort of investment for a telescope. I did get an X-Star 8 SE, but it was kind of really expensive. And this is just a bit more portable. And the image quality in this is fantastic. I only use it for really close in pictures of the moon. So that's fantastic. I've not used it in a while, like, but when I want to do moon shots, that's what I use. I also have a solar filter, which is a complete homemade solar filter. It's a solar film that I got off Amazon. Um, it was about 15 quid, the solar film. And then I just kind of made my own cardboard sort of template for it to mount in it. And then I just put that over to the telescope and take a picture of the sun. But I've not used that in about a year. I would have used it at the Mercury Transit, but it was clouded out for that. So hopefully we get a solar eclipse. That'll be it. Tripods. Tripod. My favourite tripod just now is this Viking. Viking tripod. I don't know the model or something. I just bought it in my local Perth store. Uh, it was about 80, 90 quid. It's pretty light, really stable. It can kind of go out really wide like that. So you can go really low to the ground if it's really windy and get a nice stable image. Uh, it's got a nice ball head. I've had to buy the ball head separately. Uh, that's fantastic. That's custom made to mount the L bracket on my Sony camera. So that just pops in there easy enough. Uh, that was about 20 quid the, the ball head. But yeah, fantastic tripod. I've got an elastic band on it as well. So if I'm doing a time lapse, I can put the interferometer. I can chuck an interferometer in like that and it holds it, which is quite handy. Always good to have an elastic band on new tripods for holding things. So that's the tripod. That's my main professional tripod, but the tripod that I've used for years before I invested heavily. This is what I took to Iceland and all that sort of stuff. Is this? I just got this out of my local curry store. It's a Velbon EF41, whatever that means. This is about 15 quid. It's really cheap, but it's worked the trick for ages. I've captured pretty much all my pictures have been with this, literally. It's just a generic tripod, pretty damn stable, very light, slips in my bag very easily. It's got a wee clip that comes out, you just attach that to the camera and then pop the camera in the top. Fantastic. I'll be gutted when I lose this tripod because I've got so many memories with this. I fitted Velcro to the, the legs of this just so I could, yet again, I've got other intervalometers that I've got upstairs, but I put Velcro on the back of them and then Velcro on that and then they could sit on like that, which is fantastic. But then I obviously thought of elastic band would do the job, so it saves me buying the bits of Velcro and I could just use an elastic band. So that's the tripod. The Ioxron. 
very dusty. I've not used this in getting on a year. Um, I've just not had the need for it. And I kind of like still photographs. I don't like sitting around and tracking the night sky and doing long exposures. And I just kind of like jumping from bit to, from location to location, just doing still images. Um, so I haven't used this in a while, but I probably will use it this year because I'll be travelling a lot more of Scotland this year. So if I get to a really dark sky, I may track the night sky a wee bit better. Um, it's fantastic. It was about three hundred. Um, it was pretty pricey. I got this off of a store in England. It was a website store in England. I can't remember the name of it. Um, it was fantastic. Yeah, about 300, two, 300 quid or something. It just tracks the night sky. So what you do is pretty much, if you've not seen one of these, they sit on the top, on top of tri a stable tripod like this, and then you pull the right, align the star tracker. So you get this wee bit here. And this point should point to Polaris, the North Star, which is easily found. Um, and if that's pointing to Polaris, that means the whole night sky is obviously rotating around that sp spot. So this platform here st starts to rotate. So the middle of that is pointing to Polaris, and it's all rotating around it. So no matter where you point the camera, if you're doing a long exposure over about 30 seconds, you won't get the star trail, because it will be following the, the stars around the sky. So if you're doing a couple of minutes worth of exposures, then the sky tracker is a must because the sky obviously does move, or should I say the earth moves, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I've not used it too much, I've not experimented it too much. I've caught the Andromeda, Andromeda Galaxy with this and Orion Nebula, but I'm not much of a deep sky astrophotographer, I don't like just sitting, waiting. I like moving about as I said before. So I'll try it this year, but it's fantastic. I yeah, can't recommend this enough really if you want to do really long exposures. So it's pretty good. You just put a ball head on to top on top of that and then the camera on top of the ball head and then it'll track the sky. It takes two minutes to set up, which is easy enough. Uh interferometer that I was chatting about a few minutes ago. Uh, it's a Flossy, if that's how you pronounce it, Flossy Intervalometer. Bog standard off of Amazon. 20 quid or something, it's about 20 quid. Um, it's good for time lapses or if you're doing a really long exposure for a foreground, etc. Easy enough, they just connect right into the side of the camera and then you can control the camera on the wee computer screen. So they're very easy. I've got one for the Sony and two for the Canons for the time lapses. That's what I used up in Iceland for time lapses. Um, so yeah, SD cards, there's nothing too generic. I've only got one in there. One is in this camera and there's SD cards all over my room and in my laptop. So I normally have four. I just use the SanDisk Extremes, the gold ones. 32 gig or 64 gigabyte. And they're easy enough. And one of the best accessories I've got is 100%. You've probably heard me going about it as well. Alamola Star Glow Filter from Case Filters. It's a game changer, really. It just kind of, it's in the name Star Glow Filter. It makes the stars glow. So, and it's just a wee bit of glass. And what you do is see your lens is pointing to the stars and you take an exposure, you just wave that in front of the lens and it kind of blows the stars and make them, makes the color of the stars come out in the picture just much more vividly and it blows out the really high, really bright stars like the constellations so you'll see Orion really well and it'll kind of dim the lesser stars, it hides the small stars that no one cares about really and blows up constellations so you can see constellations really really well, it is unbelievable. So I I will never be without this in my bag because it just makes a nice dreamy look, it's just fantastic. Um, they were pretty expensive, that was one drawback, it was 180 quid just for a bit of glass. But I would buy it over and over again, to be fair, because it just helps any picture just pop that wee bit more. So I highly recommend that Star Glow Filter. Uh, the bag that I use is a Low Pro. don't know if it's got a model or anything, but I've used this since day one. So this bag's been me, been with me for absolutely everything. 
it's been up mountains, it's been to Iceland, it's been on huge hikes, it's been in the car, it's been frost, it's frozen soil before, it's been soaking wet before, it's been boiling hot before, <laughs> it's this bag is my favourite bag, I've got lens cloths in the middle of it. So it's just got loads of compartments to put all your lenses in, SD storage up there. And you can just vary it for whatever trip you're using. It's got pockets in the front, lens cloths, hand warmers in there. And a pocket, obviously, in the front for wee thin things, you can fit your laptop in it. Fantastic lens uh, bag. I put my head torch, my head torch, it's just a normal trespass head torch, it's fantastic, it's really bright. Whew, see? Oh, it's very, very bright my head torch, but I normally keep that in these pockets. And then the good thing about these, this bag is for my light tripod, I can just fit my light tripod in there and it just straps in nice and snug and that doesn't go anywhere so when I'm going hiking the tripod fits perfectly in the in the side pockets under these straps so I can't recommend this low pro enough this is about 50 quid off of, I got this in Argos Argos actually and um, absolutely fantastic perfect perfect size for what I need for it um, yeah, can't recommend that enough. Um, I think that is pretty much it for the camera gear and equipment. I'll show you my clothing gear because clothing is pretty important when you're in minus goodness knows conditions. So I'll get some clothes and I'll show you what I use to keep warm and safe or keep the, the camera gear safe from frost and stuff. Okay, so I've got my equipment for what I use to keep me warm, my equipment. Um, so we'll start off quickly with the boots. They're just generic boots. These are obviously my old ones. They've got holes in them. These have been absolutely everywhere with me. They've travelled to different countries. They've done everything. They've seen mental sights. They've done everything. And they were 40 quid out of Sports Direct. And I've just recently upgraded to the blue version of them. 40 quid, Sports Direct. I don't know what it is, Karimir Hot Rock. Brilliant, nice and warm, really, really thick, nice ankle support, really, really comfy. That's what I use on my feet. Um, jackets, if it's not minus goodness knows what, I use mountain equipment, big fan of mountain equipment, always use their stuff. Uh, I don't know what this is called, but I do like this. It's not down, it's, I can't remember what it's called. It's warm, it's very warm, it's not a down jacket, but I use that for mostly kind of the autumn and springtime. Really, really good, really comfy, and it's nice to stand out in pictures, right? So if I'm going out to take a selfie, I'll try and wear this um, pick, um, jacket because it makes me stand out in the foreground. And I use this as my base layer, Highlander. Really, really thick down jacket. Uh, I got this for like 30 quid in TK Maxx. It was an absolute steal. Fantastic, uses it's extra small, I'm a small guy. <laughs> um, absolutely fantastic, that keeps me really warm. I've used this for probably getting on four or five years now. Uh, my favourite ever jacket, that always keeps me warm. That so that was only about 30 quid. The red jacket was that was about 130 quid. I bought that up near Avonmore. The king, the king of my photography is this. Without a doubt, the best jacket on the market. Absolutely just so warm, so thick, full of down, unbelievable. I've, this, can, this jacket will always be with me until it dies, pretty much. Really, really warm, so when it's freezing cold conditions, it's fine. When I was in the minus 17 in February, this was absolutely fine. This, I was pretty damn snug in it. So, can't re recommend mountain equipment whatever it's called, jacket, hat, just a generic hat, but I'm going to bring out my own hat soon with my, my little logo soon, so I'm going to have a nice woolly hat for myself. Um, what's, what I use on my hands, 
this is one of the best things to keep your hands warm. Mountain equipment, mittens, mitten sort of things. So you just pop your hands in them, obviously, and you can sort out your camera buttons. Do 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 all because the buttons are pretty tiny in cameras, so you have to. You've got plenty of flexibility to use all the buttons, and then when it's cold, you pop that with the thumb, and then pop that with a finger. It's so so warm. So I've used these cameras everywhere I've ever went. So the, these were about how much? Were, these were expensive. I got them for my Christmas or something. Like. They're about 70, 80 quid, but they're Gore-Tex, so they they really keep the wind chill off, the snow off, so you can make snowballs with them. They're really waterproof as well. So they are fantastic. So they were about yes, yeah, 70, 80 quid. And um, uh, this this jacket was about. 250, I got this in sterling, 250 quid, but to keep warm throughout the winter, you need it, you 100% need it, and for camping in minus temperatures you need it, so, yeah, absolutely fantastic, this has been under with under the Northern Lights as well in Iceland, so it's seen, seen some sights, always stuff hand warmers in my gloves and my socks, I just use any thick socks really, chuck a pair of these in each sock and each hand, and you're not going to get cold hands and socks. They're like 50, 50p a packet, or if you buy them in bulk, obviously discount. But yeah, put them in your hands and socks, and you'll never get cold. So when folks say, how can you deal with the cold? Well, just put hand warmers in your your socks and your uh, socks and your gloves, and you don't get cold. Problem solved. And the good thing is, well, sometimes I'll sacrifice one of my hands or my foot, and I'll take one of these out, and I'll wrap it around one of the lenses with a elastic band and it keeps the dew and the fog off so yeah sometimes I'll wrap the camera in like a sock or something and pop this in so the camera doesn't freeze as well so that's how I deal with the cold and that is about it I would think that's all my camera gear so yeah thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions just feel free to Send me a message, leave them in the comments, whatever. This video is mainly going, mainly just getting used for my website, for my uh, gear page, for my equipment page. So, yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to send me an email, whatever, about any equipment or if you need any advice. So, until I get more equipment, that's pretty much it. I'll let you know if I get any more equipment, but this is it for this season, I think. This season's going to be a big season, so I'm going to leave my equipment like this. So, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.